Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You look good today. Help us welcome your neighbor specially, specially, specially. Praise God. Say neighbor. They're about to teach you. You shall be taught. Open your ears. Open your heart. And collect the word. Because it is coming. I, I see it coming. I see it coming. Towards you, towards you, towards you. In the name of Jesus, collect your share. Thank you, Father. I stand on the existing prayers. Why marriage? Very big question. And today I shall be teaching. Two ways that Satan fights you. Two principal ways. Number one, to make you not know what to do. That's the very first way Satan fights you. Otherwise called ignorance. Satan fights you, number one, by keeping away from you the knowledge of what to do. If Satan can block knowledge from you, he has, he has succeeded. Number two way is to make you not do what you know to do. That's inaction. These are the two principal ways that Satan fights. And when it comes to the subject of marriage, what happens is people are either ignorant or not taking action that they should take. These are the two reasons why we don't even appreciate the concept of marriage. So when you get that in perspective, it sets you on course to understand how to defeat the enemy. We are not focused on the enemy, but we must understand the strategy of the enemy to disarm him. And that's why the Bible says we are not ignorant of his devices. Because at that time, it's not his device we are trying to study. It's that we understand it. Do you get what I mean? Let me give you an example. If I say fuel your car, I'm not focused on empty tank. It is that I know that the car would not move until there's fuel in it. Do you get what I mean? So it's so important to understand there are two principal ways that the devil fights. I said number one is ignorance. Number two is inaction. Ignorance is that you don't know. Number two is that you don't do what you know. Before I get into my notes proper, Satan is the master of doing satanic things in a godly way. Satan is the master of doing satanic things in a godly way. <laughs> and I'll give you examples. In a very godly way. <laughs> Have you ever seen somebody, in quotes now, fall in love with somebody's husband? Man, it's beautiful to behold. <laughs> Sleep without you. See, some of the vibes some people give people's husband, their wife has never given them. So if you want to follow vibe. So Satan is the master of doing satanic things. In the God. When people smoke cigar, have you not asked yourself that it is written clearly on the pack that this is the root to cancer of the lungs and somebody smokes it? Why? There's a high it gives. Don't you see how people have come to the point where they are reduced to sniffing gutter? See, let me tell you the truth. If you have not experienced God's high, the highness that wicked things on earth gives would actually look fantastic. So Satan comes maxed. And that's why sometimes it's difficult to get people out of dysfunction because the dysfunction itself is enticing. There's something sweet about it. If you lived in some of the kind of places some of us lived before, you know, have you ever been beaten by rats that will be blowing you air? You think those things are fairy tale? They are true. Very smart animal. <laughs> Does that not give you the picture of a girl carried in a man's car with AC? Aha. 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 Because the Bible says, for example, that her road leads to hell. Hello. Hey, some people say I talk too raw, but here's the deal. The fact that you enjoyed it does not mean it's good. So Satan does satanic things in. That's why the Bible says that even the devil comes as an angel of light. So that's not my topic. Let's, let's, let's stay focused. Two ways Satan does it, I said, ignorance and inaction. Some of us are inaction away from the reality we desire. We're not just taking steps. 
I am convinced in my heart that I am not the only voice raised to teach what I teach. But I'm convinced we are not many who dare to fix a meeting every month. So a teacher is dying at home because he's afraid who will give him money. He's afraid who will come. It's a deliverance Julia and I got a couple of years ago. You know, see, registered events and where people pay, it is easy to determine who will come. But when you do free events like we do, when we started, when we start, an opening prayer is going on. I don't know how many of you have noticed, we don't start programs late in R&M. Now, people are struggling to come late, generally by their own culture. Then you, are even starting before time. We get praying before every meeting, before the meeting, before the meeting time. So, in the early days when we, when we started and wanted to keep that culture, what happened is when we are praying, there's a temptation to do like this. So, we remind ourselves that the assignment is more important than looking back. Otherwise, that's why some people have used circumstances to get into inaction. Circumstances. Things have forced them not to do what they should do. You know, some of you, is your ex that has pushed you into inaction. You're afraid to love. So you know love is good, but inaction is worrying you. Some people are even married. They are still treating their spouses according to what their ex did. Me, that they broke my heart with singing, what will I do? I will never forget that night and that song. Free to lift my hands, free to say amen. I'm free, free to know that someday I will smile. Am I sorrow? That's how they left me. With music. The only thing I was missing was keyboard. <laughs> In action. I dare to love again. And I'm loving well, man. See that girl, Jesus. I can sell everything and go naked just to make her happy. I'm telling you. See how she's fine. Smile, smile, smile. It's legal. Smile. You can't help it. I know. Can't help it. Smile. Give me some more smile. Chook me smile. We have already enjoyed the glory. I'm not distracted. Don't worry. I came fully anointed. <laughs> That's how I was singing. Uh, my beloved is. And the auntie was smiling. I said, It's not you. The, <laughs> I, I'm singing upward, not this way. <laughs> you know <what> I'm saying? <laughs> Praise God. Let's start, um, let's start from the strangers of places, talking about marriage. Revelations chapter 4, 10 and 11. Revelations chapter 4, 10 and 11. Have we got scriptures? Thank you, Lord Jesus. We'll read the King James, then we'll read the message, and we start the message um, as it were from there. The dark screen is better, so let's stick with the dark screen. Praise God. And I think through the rest of the teaching, just, just keep it easy, leave the handbill, and we'll focus on this. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament sheweth his handiwork. No... Make it clearer. Revelation chapter 4. I thought we did our rehearsal before time. Let me have the phone. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Before they get it so that I don't lose more time. Thank you. Revelation chapter 4, verse 10 and 11. Um, reading from King James' then message. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You see, when you trust technology... Um, I wanted to carry my Bible. It's not Satan that told me not to carry Isha. <laughs> I almost said, then the devil said, drop it. <laughs> Praise God. Uh, the four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever. And cast their crowns before the throne, saying, thank you, here we go. Cast their uh, crowns before him, saying, all right, you are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things, and by your will they exist and were created. 
Somebody say, by your will. How many things did he create by his will? Is marriage one of the all things? So to understand why marriage, you have to understand whose will brought it to be. Because sometimes when our emotions begin to flow, see, the reason people get it wrong with choosing or get it wrong with the marriage is that they do not know who is the one who willed it. See, when I begin to regard who willed marriage, it will affect how I treat this woman. Because I'll realize that the origins of it are not rooted in my emotion, but in his decision. Let's see the message translation of the same scripture. Ah, you went back to this thing. Hope it will not be a big journey. Message translation. Oh, they have gotten it. The 24 elders would fall prostrate before the one seated on the throne. They worship the age after age living one. They threw their crowns at the foot of the throne chanting. Watch this. Worthy, O master, yes, our God, take the glory, the honor, the power. You created it all. It was created because you wanted it. Not because I wanted it. Because before the foundations of the earth, he had ordained me and everything I will come into. So it's not my will. So, you know, why is this important? This is important because everything I do with it has to regard who wanted it. So if it's God that wanted this, how would he want me to treat her? If this is the one thing of God. Because we think it begins from when boy sees girl, girl. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. That's why marriage itself is an act of worship. We'll talk about that another time. Deep act of worship. We must come to that point. And let me say this, especially in a crying, rolling generation. I don't say it with any demeaning sense. If you come to sit out, including today, you know how deep we go when we worship our king and maker. But there's a generation that know how to rule but don't know how to walk in him. There's a generation that I'm beginning to question, are we just emotional or we actually encounter his presence? And let me challenge you and tell you the truth. People fainted seeing Michael Jackson. Rolling at your meeting is nothing new. I mean, people fainted. He saw me. He touched me. He smiled. <sighs> Let me also tell you the truth. Hey, God, this is sit out. Relationship are married. Singles are married. Why are we going to this dimension? But let's see it. I stumbled on a page on Instagram where you can enroll in a school where you hypnotize people. All the things, the examples they did look like how you fall in church when man of God lays hand on you. So it's not everybody that you fall for that actually gave you Holy Spirit. It's an academy. You register, you pay. They possess you in the name of teaching you. Then you slay people. Okay. Believers come to sit out a lot, so let me say the truth. If the same power that throws people on the ground cannot heal the sick, then we should question how the train on the ground is happening. I'm a minister, so I will not lie. I'm telling the truth. Because sometimes your falling down only serves the pride of the man holding the mic. And you go back home with your problem. So let's be careful what we're focused on. Hello? Because the Jesus I read of in the Bible was very definite with his power. We see some train down, yes. But the Bible tells us what they were. You say that, get out! And that demon convulses him and checks out. I haven't seen anywhere in scripture where Jesus did a series on demon possession. I've read throughout scripture, everywhere he exercised authority without waste of time. See, let's come back. I'm challenging you. I'm telling you, especially if you're a constant here, you come here. This is that generation that we rise and walk in truth. Because we have a way of playing church. And that's why I challenge myself to remain anointed. I'm a, I'm a lawyer. I go to court. Because if we are not careful, we restrict the power of God to the pulpit 
then the pew are just useless people waiting for someone to pray for them. So you are here, you have been born again upward of five years, and you are still a baby. You have problem. If you like, don't come next month. You have problem. Next month is 8th of March. If you like, don't come. You have problem. It's 8th of March. You will come, but if you don't want to come, you have problem. A problem. That's why your entire prayer life is following prayer online. I said it. Your entire prayer life is to type in amen on Facebook. You are sick. Jesus died for you, tore the curtain of the temple, but you have replaced a man as the new curtain. No man comes to the Father except through me. You have now chosen a pastor and an apostle. Why you should be ministering to others? They are chasing clout up and down. I read something by a man of God this evening on Facebook. When I, I think I was sitting there waiting. It's made me smile. He said, the generation of our father stayed longer in marriages because they also stayed longer in a church. He said, but you meet my generation. In five years, they have changed four churches. A pastor I started following three years ago is your father in the Lord. You are lying. Your father in the Lord is unknown. And you ran away from him because he's not popular on Facebook. He said, this is that generation that if Jesus comes to you and says, who is your pastor? You will not know. And like the woman he met by the well, he said, it's true. You have had five pastors and even the one pastoring you right now is not your pastor. I know some people are wondering, did we still come for wine marriage? <laughs> Have I not told you before? I'm a, I'm a cold teacher. Relationship and marriage is just a cover God gave me to use to bring you so that I can preach Bible to you. Oh, yeah. You have not realized? I will still teach you the relationship, but I'll be going somewhere. <laughs> I'm a secret service agent, I'm telling you. You, did, you can't believe what you are hearing this night. Yes. That's how some people, they invited me somewhere, they don't invite me again. Because they realize that. <laughs> he didn't come to say 16 ways to kiss a man. No nonsense. Next month, by the way, I'm teaching on the protocols of romance. I still teach it. Do you understand what I'm saying? They also put the hand B. Fine hand B. The protocols of romance. If I put the hand B, let them see. I'm not joking. The protocols of romance. I will share the pro there are protocols. Where is it? Where is it? Shanda. Do you get what I'm saying? So this is your salvation. This is your beggarly salvation experience. It must change. So you are, if, if the only fasting you do in a year is the one they force you to do in your church. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. 21 days of righteousness, then the remaining days of the year. Where is the protocols? Proto protocols of Romans. It was supposed to come during announcement, but the tears have touched me too. Pro let them believe that I'm not just here to insult people. I'm here to teach. Pro See, today is why marriage. But as you're hearing why marriage, Jesus put a word in my mouth. I have a message from the Lord. Hallelujah. Who wanted it? That's why, that's why we have a generation, you know. See, let me say this to you. Your spiritual maturity is not revealed in your tongues. It's not revealed in your activity in church. It's revealed in your character. Finish. It's not about boast. It's not about, yeah, I read 50 chapters of that character. If you work for some Christians, it's the hardest place to work. Because the moment they enter office, they keep the Bible aside. God forbid. If people truly have intimacy with God, it will be easy to have intimacy with a man. Why? He will coordinate what you do. So because God wanted it, all right? Now, see, I give you another scripture to buttress the point. Let's now go back to the beginning. We have left the end. We'll go back to the beginning. In Genesis 2, 18, it was not Adam that said, God said to me. It was God that said, it's not good for you to be alone. In essence, the author of it began it. You see, some of you seated here, the truth is, God has been waiting for you to stop trying. The protocols of romance. Yes. You can remove it now. The hand is even here. You will help us give orders. God has been waiting for some of us to stop trying. You know why? We have moved in certain agitation 
that God is saying, do you realize I'm more interested in you getting married than you getting married? The anxiety that comes, let me say this to you. There are two things we think are natural that every time we take them as natural, we're actually submitting to Satan, fear and anxiety. The Bible says God has not given us the spirit of fear. In essence, it's a spirit. And for some of us this year to walk in our new dimension, we must come to the point where every day we wake up, we look in the mirror and say, fear, you are a spirit and you don't dominate me today. Because Nigeria alone can make you afraid. You have heard all the types of kidnapping. The one in the bush, the one in the estate, the one in town, the one on the road. You have heard all the types. And guess what? What the devil uses is to use stories to spread fear. Right? So, it's like, it's not good for you to be alone. I will make for you. Who did they make in God? And I also say to people, who is making your marriage? <laughs> Do you get what I mean? So, it's so important when you get that in perspective... You now realize that those two things, eh? now this is directed at the singles. That's the truth. E even the married have, for instance, I'll give you an example. There was a time, again and again, for no just cause, you know, there were projections of thought at me if we would actually be divorced at a point. And Satan uses facts. Facts. You know, I'm a lawyer, so facts come to me. You know, I'm a teacher and a counselor. Facts come to me. I'm telling you. You know how you are celebrating 10 years and the devil is pointing to you seven couples who divorced between 25 and 30 or 35 years in marriage. He's projecting facts. He's throwing facts in your face. Then at that moment, you just realize that it's not your thought, it's a spirit. Then you turn to that spirit and say, shut up. Let me give you one practical example. Uh, baby, what's that song I've been listening to? Practical example. This one happened today. It's not, in fact, you know, we, we came in differently while I was coming here. Um, Fame Foundation, you're the rock on which I stand. Da, 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 da. Let me assist you how Satan works. I'm not talking, he doesn't even know what I'm saying. I'm just telling you. Satan threw a picture at me standing in church doing a wake keep service for my wife, then when they do that real video, that song will be playing. The rock on which I stand. Da, da. You know, the song will fit that kind of scenario. And you are driving alone, and you say, Satan, shut up. Just shut up. She ain't dying. Somebody's looking at me, and you're even saying it like this. Yes. Because... When you become afraid to assert the word, Satan already is winning. So, you know, you see a believer so careful to assert the word, assert the word, assert the word. This didn't begin with me. It began for his purpose. But do we know all of God's will? I know his will enough to know that I can assert his word in this area. Do you get what I mean? And you know, that's why people say, he, and that thing entered my mind. No, it didn't enter your mind. You permitted it through your mind. It's a contention. Though we walk in the flesh, we do not war in the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not canal. They are mighty through God to the pulling down of stronghold, casting down every imagination, every thought and intent that seeks to exalt itself above the knowledge of God. It is how I will go single. Satan, I'm not going single. Because the one who originated the marriage I will enter thought about it before I became adult. For instance, my children right now, they are thinking about Wonderland and amusement park and vacation. They are not thinking marriage. God has already thought their marriage before now. But at this stage, they are not even thinking it. You see this agitation that is like seven years old in your life because you are just like, you know, 25. And it started when? That agitation. Somebody finished the job before you showed up. That's why the Bible says, be anxious for nothing. But in all things, we pray and supplication. Why prayer? Because the first dimension of prayer is to get into his will. And that's why the greatest prayer ever prayed and will ever be prayed is the prayer, not my will, but yours. Jesus himself prayed it. 
There are two dimensions of that prayer in the marital journey. Number one, in the choice. Number two, in the expression of the marriage itself. Because you see this marriage, once my will begins to dominate this marriage, I begin to fail him. But once I allow his will to dominate what I do, I get a pass mark with him. That's the greatest prayer ever prayed. So Jesus is in Gethsemane having a will. You know, sometimes the problem with us is that we want to be more righteous than the Jesus that walked the earth who never committed sin. So you know what we do? Rather than pray not my will but yours, we are forcing our will on him. We are forcing our, Lord, you know now, you know now, you know. God already knows. But here's the deal. If Jesus could not give, if God could not give Jesus a concession in Gethsemane, your tears cannot change his will. Because sometimes we appear to want to use tears. By the way, God does not answer tears. God answers faith. Rooted in his word. (laughs) Especially Nigerian Christians that behave like they can pray God into what God has not determined. More prayer is to help you to tune. (laughs) It's not to help God to change. Forever, oh God, your word is settled in heaven. That's why I advise people. You know, I told my wife something straight, and I'm not trying to criticize anybody. I'm telling you, every expression of God has its use. Even the ones that keep people babies, they will remain babies if they want. At least they are are not outside the kingdom. Because God would rather have everybody enter heaven, including those that will enter with smoke, escaping fire. The Bible says I'm not the one saying it. (laughs) Just how I'm saying. But you know, you see that prayer Julia leads Monday to Friday? I told her, look, it's not prayer of promises. This week, your life has changed forever. This week, my... I said, madam, so if you go there, yes, plenty of people have joined. I said, anybody you see show up consistently, keep grooming them. Why? You know, like yesterday, what were they even praying about? Alignment. Who wants to align in Nigeria? People want car. People want husband. People want children. People want money. And that's why a lot of us end up in money and cannot keep our Christian testimony. Because what we came to God for was not God, it was for things. And we see the example in Jesus. So I know there are not plenty of preachers like me in Nigeria, and I'm not trying to boast, I'm just telling you the truth. Jesus fed them, fed them, fed them. When the hour came, they, they shouted, they joined the mob, crucify him, crucify him. Where was the critical mass that ate his food when they were saying crucify him? Why did the riot not break out? No! That critical mass could not even identify. No one that the apostle would stand and say, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for the power of God unto salvation. That's why we have people in their offices, firebrand in church, but everybody in their office is still doubting they are Christian. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. So you see, when it comes to this issue of his will, you know, you must realize that this is rooted in his choice. And to the single, what it does is, this should be how your faith is refined in the subject of marriage. I tell people, single people especially, turn to heaven and say, Dear Lord God, you have a plan for me in marriage. Hope you know God's plans have timelines and seasons and all. Some people are yielding away from a marriage. Just yield. Just yield. Sometimes we need to even stop asking for it. Show me your way. Teach me your word. Let your understanding fill my heart. Because some of us need to come to the point where we even understand what he understands. Because he says his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. In essence, for his thoughts to become our thoughts, we must adopt it. And the adoption process is a submission process. So Jesus said, no, my will will yours be done. Right? So that's the first thing you must get. That this is his choosing. And that's why for some of us, let me tell you the truth. In God's mercy, he has frustrated some relationships you have entered. Because those relationships have nothing to do with his curriculum. You just promoted yourself. Because they come back, repeat. So while you are crying, heaven is smiling. So you are seeing breakup. Heaven is seeing breakthrough. One daughter saved. One son saved. <laughs> After they danced over me, 
Because one girl was going to come to Congo campus, Shanda. And I was chasing something else in Makodi. I just, it's like one angel, just break it, break, break it, make her sing. Let her sing now, sing, sing unto him. <laughs> and she sang unto me a sorrowful song. <laughs> Mumu, I was begging up and down. <laughs> and my destiny was loading. I was begging. Do you understand what I was But miss this kind of treasure. My God. My God. See wife. Jesus. Glory to God. Not a knife, my God. She doesn't cut. Praise God. Don't hold the smile. Release it. I see a smile coming. You smile it. <laughs> hey! <laughs> there are four mandates we must fulfill if we take the marital journey according to God's will. The four mandates we must fulfill. This would be the judgment of every marriage. And let me quickly say this before I reel out the mandates and talk about them. If you are married here, your marriage is not a mistake. Even if you think it is. Before I go into the four mandates, there are two things you would do with marriage. If the marriage is on the track, you will do only one. That's to keep these four mandates. If the marriage is not on track, you will do the other one first before you come to these four. Lord, help me. This is where we get the accusation that Christians just force people to stay inside marriage and suffer. While we're yet sinners, Christ died. If your partner ever misses the track, you are the appointed savior. Christ is our example for that. He redeemed his bride to himself. We must look at the word of God not from an emotional perspective because the moment you get emotional about this, you will slap me. Actually, you don't know what I'm going through. Mm. That's why there are two graces the intercessor needs. Number one, the grace to even intercede. Because if you regard the fact, you won't even pray. Number two, the grace to pray through. Now, let me explain because sometimes there are certain things that confuse us. If God answers prayer, why well, have I been praying for so long? Baby, please come. Sammy, please come. Go this way. Miracle Adese, please come. I said, Sammy, you should go there. Go, go in there. Just one step up, yeah? Thank you. Watch this. If I'm interceding for her, the first thing we are trying to deal with, not because God does not answer prayer. God does not violate human will. Watch this. If she's not lining up, God wants her to line up. Satan destroys through the soul. So while I'm interceding, why do I say I first of all need grace to pray? Here's the deal. The emotional thing to do if this person is the one offending me is to attack back or to walk away. Everybody will justify it. Just put a post on Facebook. You can't believe what I survived in that seven years. By the time you give the facts, they have buried her. And that's why, you know, last month I was saying this, and I, I'm not saying it jokingly, I'll repeat it. You see people like Emeka uh, Ike, Yule Doche, if you follow, you see I'm calling names straight because they are not ashamed of what they are doing. Those people are just boys trapped in adult body. Because anyhow you want to solve your problem, the social media is not 
when you were falling in love, we didn't give you the love. Leave us out. Go and say, counselor. So, the emotional thing. So, that's why, see, whether you are married or not, I give you one prayer point already. Lord, give me the grace to handle the shenanigans. This generation understands that language. Any shenanigan they come with, I receive grace. What is the handling? The handling is not, I'll just be taking it to... Uh, the handling is that despite what comes to my emotion, I have the capacity to do this. Jesus was supposed to walk away from that cup. But a certain grace was supplied to him to say, you know what? Right now you deserve my walking away. Right now you deserve my response in anger. But I have received the grace to do this. This is where it gets tricky. So if God answers prayer, why have I prayed for one year? Guess what happened? This is what intercession does. Is that me now in this one? Arela? Find them for me. Let them come and do the remaining illustration part. See what happens when you pray. Earthly realities are channeled through the soul. Where information sits, where emotion is, where decisions are. God begins to walk on this person. Watch this. She has taken some step. God needed her to meet this person for certain information. God needed the person to just walk in to sit out. God needed the person to just pick fa open Facebook and stumble on a teacher. What's going on? If the two people I called for were here, just attend that meeting. What else would they tell you? Just go. What are you doing this evening? nonsense what intercession does is while you cannot twist the will of this person two of you come while you cannot this one you always carry back like how many of you what uh, come with it come with it um, that evangelism movie that the guy was carrying one load until the team pilgrim's progress mm -hmm. Arella here Amina here in this drama Amina is Angel, you are demon. <laughs> but you are not demon. So as I'm praying, balakata. So you are going to be telling her, please go and see him. He'll be saying, don't go. Don't go. Do you get what I mean? So we can start. As I'm praying, pasha, kali, pada, dasha. Be telling her to go and see him. You'll be saying, don't go. No, be telling your mom. You are the angel. Be telling your mom to go and see this pastor. You'll be saying, don't go. Shatashi, katakalaya. Param, patoshe, katakalaya. Now watch this. Watch this. What intercession does is that the force begins to push back this influence. Do you get what I mean? Well, here's the deal. There's still a will. Now, the soul is so powerful that after I push back this influence, watch this. This voice is live. This voice is memory. Do you get what I mean? So this voice has to keep speaking not against another voice but against a memory until the memory is drained. I saw that meeting. It's not Ocholi and those young people. Elders like me, they go there. Are you getting what I'm saying? Do I see my age mates there? What are they even teaching? Now if I stay, what happens is this happens. But guess what? Because this person has choice. They assign fresh ones to me. They see that if I stay in prayer, atmosphere will change. So, this is not the problem now. Before she gets him to come here, they reassign to me. Why are you even praying? Why are you wasting your time? These six months you have prayed, what has changed? And I say, I'm not praying again. Assignment has shifted from me back here. So you have knocked me away from praying for my spouse. So I'm no longer the focus. Anytime I go back in prayer again, they leave her and they come here. Because if they can stop the prayer, they stop the miracle. 
If they can't stop the prayer and I remain, that's where Jesus came to and said, Peter, Satan has asked to see you, but I have prayed for you. Can I know a place my spouse is trying to line up and I choose to stay until I win? Can I know? You see, so that's the interaction. Thank you guys. God bless you. Now, no, no, not you. Here's the deal. The aim of God is to get the will here, this will, to come here. Let's assume intercession has worked. You think that's all? I've seen people cancel and cancel and cancel and at the end of the day, it looks like they have wasted my time. Why? It is one thing for the will to bring her here. It's another thing for the heart to open to listen. So sometimes people come to me and they think I'm the miracle center. It hurts me because I'm not. A miracle still needs to happen. Something still needs to happen. This is one of the reasons we post as much as we post every day. So that God can use us. Somebody needs to stumble on something and break down. Some of you who are praying for us, don't stop. You see those slides? They should come so anointed. You see those short clips? Somebody should just sit and break down. What's going on? God is now breaking through the barrier and hitting the decision. Because nothing is going to change until the decision. That's why we cry a lot of times and don't change. Because we were emotional, we were touched, but we didn't decide. That's why intercession is not... At this point, what am I doing? I keep asking for grace. I'm getting offended. I'm getting pissed. I'm getting pissed. Help me, help me, help me, Lord. 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 My mouth wants to speak in a way I should not speak. Help me, Lord. 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 Because you're trying to help somebody else forgetting that you actually need help. That's why angels came and strengthened him in Gethsemane. If angels didn't strengthen him, we would have had two Lucifers walking the earth. What do I mean? The rebellion of the Christ would have created God in a perpetual human falling state. Lucifer won't know if he reached that level. Because this one had come in human form. Imagine that one rebel. So God dispatched angels. Go and help that guy. He has never sinned, but if he's seen this one, <laughs> if he's seen this one, it's over. I'm not saying this to excuse anybody's failure. Sometimes our spouses fail because they were persistence in prayer away from being saved. So she comes here. Guess what? Counselor counsels. We begin to see some miracles. Thank you, counselor. You can go. But in the curriculum of God of the restorative plan, there's an association she should come into. So you know what happens? I love the way my pastor says this, so let me repeat him. He said, even during vacation, don't go cold in your spiritual life. Because sometimes we celebrate too early. I know Nigerians are still celebrating the victory over South Africa, but let me tell you the truth. The miracle was in the 92nd minute when that guy had a rebound that didn't go in but went up. Right after that miss, the game was over. If that ball had gone in, as you go to the center line and pass it, Pew, 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 pew. and all this noise we are making would have not made it. Well, I happen to know football and follow it very well, even though I don't talk about it as much in public. All the people arguing that was a men's goal was a goal is a lie. The rule of VAR is that if there is an attacking move, don't stop it. In case your decision is wrong to have stopped it, so all those people blaming referee that if you come to Lagos, they'll kill him. You just commit murder for nothing. He was right because there was an attacking move to allow the attacking move finish. If the decision I wanted to call is wrong, the goal will stand. If I am right, I will cancel the goal. But guess what? There was a wild celebration. He removed his mask. I celebrated too. <laughs> Do you understand? False celebration. It was a wrong goal. So at this point, hey, whoo! You know, it's also a lot of Christians I know that God gives a breakthrough, then they use sin to celebrate it. They throw a party and drink themselves into madness. You know, some people will leave church when God just gives them the miracle they are looking for. So for some people, even the angels will say, God, alarm, small, I make alarm. 
We like in attendance. <laughs> in attendance, good. The aim is here. That's why the Bible even admonishes those of us who teach from the pulpit that until we all come to that unity of faith, to maturity, that's where we should raise people to. So at this point, the answer is for nothing. Or prayer and supplication mixed with thanksgiving. Lord, I thank you for the victory so far. I thank you, he's even coming to sit out. I thank you, she's even deciding to pray. I thank you, I thank you. Because a lot of times our complaint ought to be replaced by thanksgiving because none of us have experienced it so bad that there's nothing to thank God for. None. Because in the curriculum of God getting my spouse exactly where God wants my spouse is thanksgiving for how far God has brought my spouse. Because what happens is thanksgiving would empower the right atmosphere in them. But murmuring and complaining is how Israel missed the promise or delayed the promise. So what's going on here? I'm complaining. I'm complaining. I'm complaining. I'm complaining. Guess what? She leaves this place of counsel backward. But there's the target. This is an association that God wants them to have. If you know how powerful you are in your spouse's life, you wake up to some more prayer. Guess what? You are the last gate Satan will cross before he hits your spouse because of the covenant of marriage. You are the last gate. He will... Oh, if you work in government office, I've never worked. At least I've seen memos. I've used it for cases. There are series of signatures. Satan wants to walk you up to the point where you open the final gate, you. That's it, too. So if I remain, the association can happen. Then we can now talk about the four things we must talk about as a couple. God bless you guys. Clap for them. Now, that is an assignment all of us will do at different levels, depending on the level of imperfection our spouse comes with. Because I tell you the truth, nobody is coming perfect to your life. Everybody is coming with their own baggage. Some is exes. <laughs> Everybody is coming with something. And please, this is not sin permission. I'm not saying, I just take it. Oh. I'm just saying, if, if, if you want to know if the person is coming perfect or not, um, during dating and courtship, carry rays or cut them if blood come out. Yes. Please cut them in like here like this. Just cut it. No, because, because some people expect that it's a spirit they are dating. You know, just tear them here like this. Yeah, keep it away from this side so that it's not just like here. Or do it galamak. <laughs> As I say, galamak. One of our very good old hymns when I was in Kwaibo Church growing and doing Boys Brigade just came to me. At that time as a kaya, no. Was sick and he was almost dead. Then Isaiah the prophet came to him and he said, you are going to die. You will not survive on your people. I'm a good teacher, Jesus. See how you're laughing. Jesus. Eh? <laughs> Praise God. Four key things God must now do with the marriage. Number one, he must establish the dominion mandate. Marriage is the hack of God's power expression on earth. That's why Matthew 19 tells us, if any two of you shall agree as touching anything, anything. And that's why I did the demonstration I did. Because if you are not on the same page in God, you have already leaked your power. Some marriages are as broke as their lack of agreement prayer. All that money they are chasing, their hands have not touched each other, touch and agree. 
It's a dominion mandate. So I don't want to read it, but let, let me just refer to it because of time. If you read from Genesis 1, 26, 27, 28, the conversation introducing mankind was a dominion conversation. Let us make man our image after our likeness and let them. The first word he used was a marital word, them, not him, ha. He projected a union. Let them. He projected a community. Let them. He projected a people. Let them. It's a dominion mandate. That's why if you are dating a person and you cannot find the dominion mandate in the dating, you are with the wrong person. You are dating somebody, you say, can we pray about it? The person is wondering. You to wonder, what are you doing in my life? <laughs> it's a dominion mandate. If our union does not create power, we are wrong. In essence, in God, there's nothing like power couple because all of us are power couple. So it's not power couple because we are slightly more popular than you and we put a picture on Facebook. There's no power in Photoshop. There's power in touch and agree. That's why we have a generation snapping picture. They cannot push cockroach. Every disease comes to your house, it stays. Every condition comes, it stays. Poverty comes, it stays. See, the truth is the marriage is actually supposed to be a power center. It's a power generator. And that's why you see, Satan brings a lot of distraction through the soul, through emotions. We must touch and agree. It's a dominion mandate. So when we say, why marriage? See, oh God, Jesus. I've known this guy for 21 years, man. Everything other than what God wills in a marriage gets tiring. That's why men, we argue that man is a polygamous being. In essence, he's self-serving. Because when he begins to serve himself, what dominates is his flesh. So, fleshy man, we argue that man is polygamous because what he doesn't understand is that when you are soaked in sin, you will think that's who you are. Not knowing that you are simply soaked. You know, you know there are two ways to eat bread. By either putting the bread in your mouth and drinking the tea or soaking it inside the tea. Many of you are guilty. You know yourself. It's only when you are in public you behave. But when you are at home, you know, <laughs> one girl was dating a guy. <laughs> story, 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 oh, story. That's the response. Story, 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 oh, story. Story, 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 oh. The girl was dating this guy. The guy took her out. The guy is like, he liked Gary a lot. The guy said, Gary, what's Gary? <laughs> the guy thought he wanted to icebreaker for conversation to flow. She said, what's Gary? I don't know. Then the guy tried to describe it. He said, oh, that white substance that is sometimes reddish here. Yeah? <laughs> Guess what? <laughs> you know, when Satan wants to embarrass you, he first of all make you form. So she ordered all manner of stuff, you know, spaghetti, french fries. But she had fever. Before she came and she was covering the fever. Now auntie threw up with Gary and Granote. <laughs> Gary and Granote. <laughs> the guy now say, is that not Gary I can see? <laughs> Isn't that Gary? <laughs> Dominion mandate. And that's why you see eh, Satan is very strategic. That's why you see the foundation of most marriages is distraction. So we are in dating. We are not deepening dominion mandate. If one of the places, especially if you are not a son of a rich man, you express your dominion mandate is even your wedding. How you are able to touch and agree that money will come in this tenable economy? So you see, some people are breaking relationship, not knowing that the relationship should have stood with dominion mandate. So they looked at their economy and broke up. People who started relationship with God's conviction looked at the economy and broke up. 
forgetting that it is time. And guess what? I tell you the truth. I lie not. As a single person, if somebody is in your life that does not approach money conversation with dominion mindset, if you marry them, you suffer together. You know why? This world, the economy of earth, is tampered with by Satan. And children of God must walk in Goshen to stand. Since I was born till now, I keep hearing economy meltdown. I don't know why the economy has not completely disappeared. It has been melting. It check your life. There have been economic meltdowns as old as Israel and Palestine problem. Year to year, you hear it. Why? And there are two dimensions of dominion. Two that you must excel in if you fulfill God's mandate for marriage. Number one, personal dominion. That's why there seem to be a lot of battles in your life. You know why God smiles at it? God wants you to use those ones to rehearse for global dominion. food on the table? No, we should solve that one first. And there are different ways to solve that one. Number one, I activate, like I was teaching in January, I activate the principles of the kingdom, put my hand to work. I get diligent. I pray in faith and believe. So there's personal dominion. Personal dominion. Where we sit and agree and beat Satan first of all in our life. That's why even besetting sin is an area of personal dominion. You see, Satan, you cannot keep me in sin. Eh? Me and you sin are just playing and playing and playing and playing. I must come out of it. Because I'm here for the nations when we come together. Because that's why I brought Adam and Eve together. Then you now go into global dominion. Are you getting what I'm saying? Let me give you some areas of personal dominion, for instance. Do you know a lot of married people need to, first of all, win dominion with their mouth? Because everything you feel, you say, you are a child. Like I thought in one of my teachings, there are two ways you tell a woman she's beautiful. Either by face or by faith. Is that she's looking at all you want to believe God that she is? Sometimes when you are commenting on Julia's picture online, it's that she's annoying me. So I use Facebook posts to calm down. See my beautiful wife. It's a lie. I'm angry. You say it by faith. She's beautiful. Good woman, virtuous woman. Proverbs 31 is a lie. She's behaving like Revelation 22. Proverbs 31. <laughs> Personal dominion. If I say everything I feel like saying, I'm, I'm a child. Personal dominion. Dominion over my emotions. So that when we join hands together, we are joining hands together as a stream. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. And our personal dominion is protected by our instructions. Time will fail me to go into that. That's why we teach every month because there's a lot to teach. But let me highlight it so that I can leave dominion and go to the other three. Your dominion is protected by your instructions. For instance, consecration for a child of God is a protective instruction. So it's not, it's, it's, because without the instruction, when the child of God decides to skip food, fast, pray, those are instructions that protect the dominion. Not because he doesn't have dominion, but because until you put protection to that dominion, you can't exercise it. So if you look at Genesis chapter 2, before you get to 18, where it says it's not good for you to be alone, God began to give Adam instruction. Why? He's protecting the dominion. When I love my wife, I give you a standard scripture for it. First Peter chapter 3, verse 7. He said, uh, dwell with her according to knowledge so that your prayers be not hindered. In essence, the ultimate protection is for the dominion of your prayers. And how do I protect the dominion of my prayers here? Yeah, treat her well. Why submit to your own husbands as unto the Lord? Because it is pleasing to him. And how do I want to exercise dominion as a woman when I'm not pleasing to him? And how do I become pleasing to him by following the instruction to submit? I get what I'm saying. 
So he gives us instructions to protect the mandate on our lives. And this thing I'm telling you is not a lie. There are two reasons why I have to line up in my marriage every time. Number one, so that I can have peace in my life. Number two, so that I can remain in ministry. Imagine keeping my list to Julia the last one month. What will I be telling you? Do you realize we post every day, two or three times every day? <laughs> How won't they do one? So I should just be living a lie. Do you understand? So I wake up and live a lie. Try to help you and not help myself. Somebody once asked me, you, 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 uh, this video, your video, how do you manage to listen to this? I can't hear myself. I say it's before I had that problem. I don't just edit. Sometimes I put it and just be listening. Now you didn't talk that thing. And you know one gets sense. <laughs> I know you have not met this kind of preacher. Because all the preachers you have met are very perfect. They don't to get angry with their wives. They are lying. Or they are just keeping quiet. You know there are two ways to lie. To either say it's not true or to keep quiet about it. <laughs> But let me tell you when I decided to be very factual with preaching. When God began to impress on my heart that until you understand the humanity of the Christ, you will never understand the power of the Christ. Because there's a tendency to see the Jesus that walked the earth as a superhuman. God walking in human form. Face no temptation. And that betrays all the scripture that says he was tested in every way. See, let me tell you, Jesus had to look away from some women because the women say, look at me. Behold me. Oh baby, come on down. Some of you can't even believe it now. Because the way you see Jesus, eh? He didn't go to the toilet. You're lying. That's how I heard a story. Somebody else with that Jew that Jesus said, excuse me, I want to use the toilet. The person could not believe it. Mumu behavior. He's not human. Don't go to the toilet for one week and see. No, some people used to do one week. Two weeks. No, three months. What you should be releasing, you are keeping. Hey! Number two, under the white marriage is to spice up your life. Hey! Next month, the protocols of romance. When I explain it, finish. And they can't anoint it and feel it now. Eh? Me, I'll just be commanding marriages. Because some people, as I'm teaching this thing now, the spice is coming towards them. My God. My God, my God, God, give me my own. Don't worry. When you understand the why that I explained, you understand the dominion mandate, it becomes easy for God to give you the sweet part. Because you know it is easier to give ice cream to an adult who understands where to stop sugar. You know, that's why some of you sit there, let me expose you. When you were young and were not the one paying rent, you thought when you grew up, you will cook a pot of meat and just eat it so that your mother will be ashamed. But adulthood has happened to you. Same meat, you know, if you chop. You are Jimmy. Calorie, 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 calorie. You are eating grass. Calorie, 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 calorie. Maturity has come. So some of us want the spice when we have not gotten the dominion. Some people just want the marriage to be happy. Just to be happy. I love the way Ocelli talks about Julia. Hey, if he doesn't dominate his speech, he cannot create the spice. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So number two reason is actually to spice your life. He says it's not good for you to be alone. That means I'm bringing a companion. Companionship is sweet. He said two are better than one. So that I will not preach a Christian marriage where people are just suffering. That's not God's will. Every marriage that is not enjoyable is not expressing God's order. In God's order, there's total enjoyment. But guess what? There's time to take ice cream. There's time to take bitter leaf. So number two reason why marriage? And the Lord God said, who said? It is not good that the man be alone. He brought it as a spice. How many of you have ever been in a car on a hot day that doesn't have AC? Although you are going to your destination and suffering. So while expressing the dominion mandate, God wants you happy. God wants me to come home looking forward to meet a friend. God wants us to be able to, and let me tell you the truth. Singles here, I tell you this, and I'm not missing what I'm telling you. I pray for you. You must remain single until somebody worthy comes. You are not going to patch into a marriage. 
You're not going to carry a tuke, tuke, tuke. You know what tuke, tuke is? That car that you don't even know if the driver that is driving it or the car that is driving the driver. Hey, oh, tuke, 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 tu, 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 tu. I see. I'm not insulting anybody. I've suffered in this town. Have you had a car that broke down on you seven times in one month? Every the car just wants to break record on express, on street, <laughs> on bridge. I had this car, bar. he broke record. Bridge, express, street, third road, on third road, poto poto. The worst, I went to minister. When the pastor was putting my picture on Facebook with the fine car I came with, I didn't reach home. <laughs> the car was controlling my destiny. You know when somebody says, it's my personal mechanic, you have a mechanic because your car is bad. <laughs> That's why you have a personal mechanic. <laughs> if your car is good, you'll be going to a, a proper garage for servicing. <laughs> you are not servicing, you are repairing. <laughs> Father, have mercy. Your new car is coming in Jesus' name. what? He wants spice. He wants you to enjoy the journey. Because it's a long journey. Let me tell you. See, please, I'm not insulting anybody. I've suffered in this life. I'm telling you. I went to preach in Ife. I came back to a bad one to fly. They cancelled the flight. Hey! Nigeria Road. I sat in one Siena. I was not the one sitting in the center. The center was sitting in me, but my leg was... <laughs> my leg was like this throughout. The only thing I could do with the leg was... <laughs> there was nothing like this. <laughs> we reached Abuja. <laughs> and then... <laughs> We reached Abuja, I was adjusted. You know, when you have not touched glory, hell will look like heaven. <laughs> hey! I said, wait here for do one hour. Now I do this, how many hours? I remember one time also, speaking of which, some of you were here earlier, heard me talk about this when I was saying some of us in action is wounding us. We went to Portaco to do hangout, 2017, I'll never forget. We're 13 of us on that team. They cancel the flight. So we got buses. You remember? We got buses. Two buses, I think. Oh no, one bus. And hit road. That's when I saw the proper Igbo Okpa. We stopped somewhere. I don't know. Look where, anywhere. Then they chop Okpa. I was just thinking about my life. Is this, is this it? Is this what they call ministry? This is it? <laughs> is maybe this? <laughs> this can't be it. What we see online is protocol officers and push cars. <laughs> but guess what? And that's what I'm telling every married person here. Valentine is even coming next week. Oh, you are dating somebody you claim you are dating. Spice. Spice. And if you are a man here, one of the spices that never fails is alert. Keep her alert by alerting her. It's very simple. It never fails. Even if the woman is any one billion. Send out one care and see. Oh my God, baby, you send me money. Yes. Talk to her. Christ shows us how to spice up. Guess what? Guess what? Because he left us such an assignment. Then you come to scripture. You see scripture like I never leave you nor forsake you. In essence, as you're going on this journey, yes, it's a journey of purpose. But guess what? I'm standing with you. I'm right there with you. He said, I'll never leave you to the end of the age. Ah, he said, I'm going, but another comforter is coming. He's just like me. He will be with you in the morning, the afternoon. He will be in you, not just with you. Hi. Hi. And on you go home for work in the morning. Even your WhatsApp is useless in your marriage. It's a spice. It's easier to fulfill purpose when you're spicy. Take note of this when it comes to spices. Every marriage has a more or less factor. 
you are likely more in an area your spouse is less. It's not for complaining, it's for spicing. That's why he made a helper comparable to him. A helper to bring help in the area he needs help. You must be the spice. You must be the reason they are happy. I once wrote an article online, who is doing your spouse? You may be the one married to them, who is doing them? Who makes them smile and excited? Who do they look forward to talking to? I know you are not a talking type, but man, be the listening type. Open your ears and listen. Just calm down and take it in. And don't go and watch my video and say, if Ocheli doesn't like it, uh, go straight to the point. Don't go straight to the point. If you know how many things I've kept quiet, you cannot go straight to the point. This woman, this is my controller. I did a video today. I've not even released it. I'll release it later. Point of view. Who is driving you? She was there and driving. See my controller here. I'm like a game. This is a console. Spice their life. See, nobody comes into anybody's life to labor. Everybody comes into somebody's life to be happy. Is there all those nonsense they write? Marriage did not make you happy. It shall make you happy. It's supposed to make you happy. So is the endurance trek? Hey, my people. Hey, marriage shall. It's not easy. Hey. Hey, marriage. It's proof that all is not well. So number two reason God gave. Now, why did God give that? God knows that the assignment will be so tasking. He wanted to put some ice cream in your life. Because the assignment is tough. And it's tough. Steak, suya. He need to put something. You know, there are times Julia asks me, what do you want to eat today? I say, anything that makes me feel good. You see all these calories people are counting? Let me tell you, the calories I eat, if women eat it, they can't enter a door. Well, life is so tough, man. You need to sit down sometimes. And that's why sometimes I tell my wife, I buy something, I spread it on the table. My don't count no calorie. Eat, I'm your husband. Eat, I'm your husband. Tomorrow you can go and gym, but today you work it. Nonsense. You want to suffer and suffer. You, all this calorie I counted, Jesus can come tomorrow. <laughs> the Bible says it's coming soon. You want to suffer. <laughs> and guess what? All the people that are giving fitness, they are even confused. Today, egg is good. Tomorrow is not good. To, next tomorrow, water is good. Is, please do your best and just, just enjoy the rest. I beg. Just do your best. I beg. Praise God. <laughs> Number three, marriage is a system of support because God is a God of order. 1 Corinthians 14, 40, let all things be done decently and in order. So when the marriage stops being supportive, the marriage is failing. I don't say this to both, but I'll give you an example. Julia was praying with her friends. They always pray. They always pray. Actually, there's a praying machine in my house. That's the truth, and I'm glad for it. Pray, pray, pray. Prakala, kapala. So they decided, you know, she decided, you know, she, she needed to pray with more women, bringing more women to partake in it. She's not a social media savvy person. Don't even waste your time trying to make her a social media savvy person. It's simple. So she, she kept bugging me. I, I, initially, I'm like, oh. But I, I came up to read, man. I'm a support system here. So I took her to Instagram, my Telegram. This is how it works. Created the group. Did this. Do the design. Put it out. That's what I'm supposed to be. Not your, your mates are post Because here's the tendency. The Bible said they have compared one to another and become fools. For instance, I give you an example. While you were up here, I snapped you, I posted it, hailed you, even tagged you. Now me go still come and accept the tag so that I can be on your page. If I want to compare her with those women who snapped their husband, Julia is not going to snap me. I don't waste your time. Even if she snapped me, the picture will be bad. My head will be oblong. I'm not expecting it. That's why some people enter marriage with over expectation. Know who you marry. And some of you, the only problem you have is that you're comparing your husband to your pastor. Your pastor is not your husband. Your husband is not your pastor. Your, your pastor just happened to carry the mic all the time and convince you that his ways are the best. And that's why if we go back to the good old days of asking questions after teaching, some of your pastors would have left business. That's why they just preach for you and you go home. Go back to Bible study days. You realize that half the revelation, including what I'm teaching, if you want to interrogate today in this room, you pass mic, you hear something. So you are just comparing your pastor because he carries mic and nobody's questioning him. By the way, let's go back to that apostolic talk at the beginning. 
if you have never had to go and research the scripture based on something your pastor said that didn't sit well with you, you are misled. Because everybody knows in part and professor in part. And that's why we have denominational demon possessing people now. Because no longer the word of God. Though. Hey! Somebody just said, this guy is just looking for trouble. Yes, it's true. That's why I thank God he gave me sit out. If nobody invites me, I'll keep teaching and sit out. It's system and order. System and order. I'm a system. I'm not just a person. I'm a system. There is a support I bring here. There is something I should never complain of but supply to her. But the tendency is to complain about what I should supply. I'm a system. So the one who brought the marriage knew that you are a system. He knew that this person will not get this area forever. No school can change it. But guess what? He equipped you with the capacity to be the supply. So all of you women of fire, for the first one week of your women of fire, I was inside the prayer. I'm the one that will press start. I'm the one that will press record. It's the following week I abandoned her. That's why people had one day that it was not recorded. I just walked into the room. Till today, my normal reminder, did you record? That's question one, question two. Have you posted it? That day, she just looked at me. Hey. I said, I can't spend one week teaching you and you fall my hand like this. I abandon you some more. Right now, she's proficient. Do you get what I mean? I'm a system. Let me tell you another system in this other name I cannot lie. I talk to you more, she prays for you more. I'm telling you, straight system. System. Shanda kalaka ibalaka kaya. When I heard the prayer, I believe God. I believe God. At the point I meet the say, Mother, I beg now. Prayer watches. Prayer watches. Laka balaka tabalaka. I say, Madam, we finished program today. I beg, leave this one. Just rest now. And she's like, she's feeling this headache. I see her not resting. But she's playing her part. She's a system. Even in the home, she's a system. I'm the one that declares where we want to go. She's the one that enforces where we must go. So she's my runner. Where do I get that from? Habakkuk 2. Write the vision, make it plain that he may run that reads it. So what do I do as a system? I bring the clarity. She does the running. For instance, the children were doing five chapters of the Bible every morning before they eat breakfast and go to school. Now they're doing three. She's the enforcer. You lie down there, you read it. So every once in a while, I check up on the system. How far is it going? Because we can't all do the same thing. But we can do things towards the same direction. So marriage is that system. Marriage is that system. Final point. Marriage is God's assurance that a godly seed will emerge. Especially in the world in which we live today. The devil is after the seed of the woman. Not just in the sense of the Christ. But in the sense of every seed that walks the earth. And that's why I'm always amazed when people just want to go abroad and use their children for excuse. I want better life for my children. Let me tell you, every system you go to has a demon to contend with. So if, if leaving Nigeria for you is escapism, I am sorry, you are deceived. Let me repeat, some of you are watching online, you are watching from some other civilizations. The civilization you are in, if you are not careful, will swallow your children. Boys will come and call themselves girls. Girls will call them, come and call themselves boys. Some people come and call themselves whatever you don't know and what you can imagine. There's insurgency everywhere, just the type of insurgency. And because I am speaking to us and people beyond there, let me just say it as it is. For instance, every year, there are more mass shooting incidences in the U.S. than days. For instance, as of June last year, there were over 300 incidences of mass shooting in the U.S. as of June. How many days are there in a year? 360 something. As of June, you have just done half of it. I'm not saying one person to one person. Mass shooting. That somebody opened fire on people. Because of my line of job, I know people struggling to get back into this country. Just the same way you know people struggling to leave this country. The best place to be is in God's will. It's not any other location. So marriage that fulfills God's will is an assurance that you have a godly seed. Why? 
There are three dimensions to a child's growth. Number one, the total dependence phase, where they don't even choose anything. Not their name, not their language. Not, they don't choose anything. That's why you can give birth to an Igala child in the hands of an Igbo family. The Igala did not come with the child. The Igala is just because he was born to Igala parents. It's the civilization around the child that will choose even the language. The name, the language. And guess what? That face is a very short face. It's between conception and around seven. Then you come into the question and asking phase where their cognitive senses are picking up reality and they have a lot of questions. Some parents did not even define what they should think, what they should say, what they are called, what their realities are. They come to the question phase and they are too busy to answer the questions. Very absent. Fathers who think that because you didn't turn out a vagabond through their absence, they have succeeded. That's why they boast at you and tell you they pay their school fees. Some people are just sponsors, not parents. A scholarship can do all they did. There are questions. At that stage, there are question asking machines. We are too tired. We are too busy. We are too, we are too, we are too. I know Abraham, he will command his household after me. That's where we came to and said, except it is impossible. Our children must attend every meeting we go to and minister. They should see what we are, what we represent, who we are. Not just what they see at home. They should also see what we represent and what to stand for. Ah, maybe they'll come around and play. Let them keep playing. But they know where we went to, practically. Then preteen and into teenage, they come into the opinionated phase where your legacy begins to cake. At that phase, you know what? More of your parents try to parent you when you came into your own than when you were not your own. I don't know what I did to you. I don't know. What you did to me is that when I was completely under your control, you didn't control. Now that I'm out of your control, you want to control. It's how we dictate the legacy phase. Like right now, they don't buy breakfast. We buy it. So if you know Jack Bible, you know go chop him. <laughs> you must Jack Bible. <laughs> I don't even understand what they're jacking. I don't care. <laughs> if you can understand cartoon, you can understand Bible. Because cartoon is even more complex now because to struggle to make a woman say it is okay to fall in love with a woman, what do you call love? You don't even understand love. You can read the Bible that God is love. You can re read Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. So the fourth system, see, this is the commonest failure on earth today and we are not talking about it. Why do I say so? Every derailed adult you see is a product of a system that failed. So we, we talk about society. We talk about society. We talk about society. Where did society emerge from? Common conviction. Go and read simple social study. Smallest unit of society, family. So for the singles here, this person you are falling in love with, who doesn't know where he's going to? Which child is he going to show where to go to? This mumu you are dating, Claire Mumu is obvious. Is a Mumu. Dominion mandate zero. Personal dominion zero. Global vision zero. They don't even know where they are going to. The only thing you like about them is that you like them. And to you married here, you know sometimes I feel like when some people are asking for fruit of the womb, God is asking you to do what with it. Use your life like what do you want to do with the child. So that your, your mother will have grandchild before she dies. That's it, ba. Like my own now, April, it will be 10 years, she has gone to heaven. Then, what will I do with them if I was giving birth for grandchild? <laughs> you do not lie, you do not fail. What is hard for you to do? He doesn't exist. You can never exist. Oh. You do not lie, you do not fear. What is that for you to do? He doesn't exist. Oh. You can never exist. Oh. According to your knowledge and your will for me, what is 
Can we just trust in him tonight? Can you say, Lord, help me align? demand it. That's what we're saying. He doesn't lie. We have exposed his will concerning us. We will walk in the dominion mandate. I will walk on purpose. I will fulfill destiny. My marriage is spiced. He said he brought them together because he desires godly seed. I will raise godly seed. Declare the will of God as your reality. Command the will of God as the reality of your life. It's not hard for him to do. He has ordered it, I leave it. I experience it, I manifest it. Yes, 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 yes. I reject every suggestion of hell. We are walking in purpose. We are walking the will of God. We are walking in the fullness. We exercise the dominion of God. Our marriage is spiced. We raise a godly seed. We raise godly seed. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I'm not walking aimlessly. I'm not working in fear. Yes, I'm not working in anxiety. Shambara, Badoshka, Bara, Katandara, Halak, Tatalia, Katan. Do not fear. What is that for you to do? We don't see nothing. Never exist, so you do not lie. You do not lie. You do not fear. What is that for you to do? He does see as he stood. It can never, ever. Oh, you do not lie. You do not lie. You do not. What is that for you 
concerning us we give you praise thank you for healing in our hearts thank you for healing in marriages thank you for correction in destiny thank you for alignment in you I take authority over every spirit of fear and anxiety and I establish by the anointing of God the peace that passes all understanding Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Let's be seated briefly. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus.